The wingers, the 11 and the 14. These outside players are typically known for their agile footwork and their rocket ship top speed. However, there's a whole lot more to this position than just getting the ball and trying to beat your opposite number one on one. As always, a quick plug, please check me out on Instagram for animated play breakdowns and head over to animator.rugbyslate.com if you want to make your own rugby animations. Now, let's get right into it with three ways to become a better winger. Number one, smart defense. If you want a general overview of how to defend as a winger, you should check out my other video on the pendulum defense. This will give you a good idea about where you should be on the field. However, what can turn you from a good winger to a great one is being smart in defense. As a winger, you can end up in bad situations defending against big overlaps with lots of space outside you. No one can really blame you for being beaten in these situations. However, if you're smart, you can still come out on top. Here's an example from the Olympic Rugby Sevens final. It shows very clearly how smart defense can work and it applies both in sevens and in fifteens. Now if we look here, it's a three on two. If the Fijian defenders just tackle their opposite man, it's an easy try on the corner. However, what the winger does is very clever. He starts running backwards, giving up meters to the attack. I've given these players numbers to make it easier to explain. The number 11 is running backwards as he knows the number seven is coming across to support. This will give him more time. The attacking 12 sees that he has a defender in front of him and one coming in from the inside. So he has to pass to the winger. Now the defending 11 just has to press the attacking 14 against the touchline and make the tackle. Effectively, the winger is dropping back and giving up meters in return for more time for the inside the defender to come across and make the tackle. It's a good compromise as simply making the tackle can easily lead to a try. If you want to better understand this type of defence, go watch some Rugby Sevens. It's a very common and necessary skill, so you'll see it all the time. So yes, quite literally, running away from a tackle can be a good thing as a winger. However, smart defence can also be the exact opposite. If you're up against a huge overlap with a lot of space, sometimes the best option is to blitz up and snuff out the attack by stopping the ball from getting wide. The goal here is to identify the danger early and time your run so you can make the tackle almost immediately after the attacker catches the ball, stopping any chance of the ball getting out wider. If you come up too late, the attacker will simply pass the ball and it'll be easy for the attack to exploit the overlap. If you rush up too early, the attacker can throw a miss pass over you and again exploit the gap. If you time it just right and wait until the ball is being passed and then tackle as soon as they catch it, not only will you be able to stop the attack dead, but also make a highlight worthy tackle. This skill is all about being able to read the attack, identify the danger, and then taking do or die action to stop a try scoring opportunity. It's obviously high risk, but if you're smart in defense and understand the dangers of not doing it, then it might be your only option. Number two, play style. Generally, a good way to get better at rugby is to watch a game, but closely follow the player in your position. If you're a 10, you can't go too far wrong watching game footage of Dan Carter or Johnny Wilkinson and trying to copy just as they play. However, as a winger there's a problem. No two wingers are the same. There's a huge difference in play style between Jonah Lomu and Chelsea and Kobe. However, they undoubtedly are some of the best wingers ever. As a winger, you typically rely a lot on your physical attributes and your play style must work with this, not against it. Let's look at a couple examples. If you're more of a traditional winger that's fast and agile, like Cheslin Kobe or Johnny May, you may want to take the ball a bit wider and deeper. This will give you much more time on the ball and much more space to move in. You'd want to get defenders one-on-one -on -one with lots of space around them. You should learn how to draw defenders one way and then step the other, and really get the most out of your speed and agility. However, if you're a strong, powerful winger who doesn't really have that same top speed, you might want to take the ball at the gain line so the defence have less time to line up a tackle against you. You should be looking to cut back against the defence at an angle to break tackles and punch through gaps. Both styles have their benefits and one is not necessarily better than the other. Number three, positioning in attack. As I mentioned before, 
wings typically have great athletic attributes. But how often at low level rugby do you just see these players waiting on the wing to be given the ball? As a winger, you should be working hard to have an impact on the game, regardless of where you are compared to the ball. Let's firstly look at when you're on the open side, far away from the ball. It's very common to see wingers stood at the end of the back line, just waiting until the ball comes to them. Instead, an option you have is to remain very wide and close to the gain line. This might look strange, but what it does is it stretches the defence, so they have to defend against the whole width of the field. If they don't, it opens up a huge possibility for cross-field kicks. As a winger, you should be constantly looking out for these opportunities and communicating with your 10, as it's an extremely effective method of scoring tries. Even if the kick doesn't come, you're still in a good position. Being a bit flatter means that you're able to support any breaks in the midfield. And being wide means you have a great angle to cut back in against the defence. And if the ball is simply passed down the line, you've had loads of time and space to reposition yourself into the right place. Where positioning and attack really comes into play for wingers who want to get themselves to the next level is when they're on the blind side. They would be easily defended if they just stayed on their wing, so why not go out looking for the ball? There are countless examples of pre-planned moves using the blindside winger to loop around the back of the back line. Go check out my other video about the most popular backs move in professional rugby right now and see how the blindside winger is used in that. Another alternative for the blindside winger to get themselves in the game is to offer themselves as an inside option for the 10 or either of the centres. It's a very easy line to run but can be very difficult for the defence to stop. And even if you don't get the ball, it's a great decoy line to draw in defenders and potentially create an overlap out wide. As a winger, you should naturally be a threat to the defence. The key to good attacking position is making yourself a threat as frequently as possible. Whether that's via crossfield kicks, an inside pop, a ball out of the back or anything. You should be making the defence work as much as possible. Don't be passive, work actively off the ball and get yourself into dangerous positions. So that concludes three ways to becoming a better winger. If you've got any other tips I haven't mentioned, please put them in the comments below and help each other out. Also, go check out my other videos on the channel and learn more about improving your game of rugby. Thanks very much for watching. 